I'm Dr. Christy Mulkey, and I'm the workshop coordinator with 240 Tutoring. Today, I'm here to bring you part three in our four-part series on rock cycles. So let's get started. I'm going to share my screen with you so that you can easily follow along. And today, part three, we are going to be looking at the metamorphic rock cycle. Now, if you haven't yet, I would highly suggest you go check out parts one and two, where we talked about weathering and erosion, and in part two, the sedimentary rock cycle, before you watch this one. But we're gonna go ahead and get into what are metamorphic rocks and how do they form? Now, if you're asking yourself, do I need to watch this video? Is this content on my test? You can see right here a nice list showing you all the tests that this content appears on. So if you see your test in here, you know you need this video. Now, what are metamorphic rocks? These are existing rocks. Now those can be sedimentary rocks, igneous rocks, or even a different kind of metamorphic rock. But they're existing rocks that undergo some type of change, changes the key word, from heat, pressure, or the action of chemicals. Now, I want you to think about the word metamorphosis. Most of you probably think of a caterpillar changing into a butterfly. That's what metamorphic means. It means to change form. So just like that caterpillar changes into something different, rocks can change into a different type of rock. And so that's what a metamorphic rock is. Now, how that happens, let's talk about that. There are three ways that this can occur, but before any of these can happen, those rocks have to get further beneath the Earth's surface. That process is called subduction. Now, you may not actually see this word on an exam, but it's important for you to understand that all this is, is when one tectonic plate along a convergent boundary moves under another, but these rocks are pulled as that occurs. So rocks are pulled down as those plates converge or hit each other, and it pulls those rocks down further beneath the Earth's surface. So as that happens, as they're pulled down, they see much more heat and pressure, and that's where your metamorphic rocks are formed, are further beneath the Earth's surface. So our first way that a metamorphic rock can form is through the exposure to intense heat, and this usually comes from magma. Magma is what's deep under the Earth's surface, and it's very hot. It heats that rock to the point that it changes what type of rock that is. Now, it doesn't melt it completely into the magma, but it does change that rock. So that's number one. Number two, I'm gonna jump over here to this side. We're gonna talk about pressure. So instead of heat, this is where you have either the upper layers of sediment applying a huge amount of pressure through their sheer weight, or tectonic plates that are sliding or colliding together, all that pressure can also cause a rock to change. That would be a metamorphic rock. And then third, we have chemical changes. Now I'm talking about this one third because it goes with heat and pressure. So when there is a lot of heat and a lot of extreme pressure, you can have fluids and vapors and chemicals that can invade the pores of a rock and actually cause a chemical reaction to occur, thus changing the chemical makeup of the rock. Now again, like in part two, we can describe this in a much more complicated way, but this is sufficient for what you need to know for your exam. Now let's talk about a few key points, all right? First, unlike sedimentary rocks that are formed at or near the Earth's surface, remember these have to have heat and pressure, so it's gonna uh, form well below the Earth's surface. So far beneath the Earth's surface is where a metamorphic rock is formed. They can actually form very quickly or very slowly. So that quickly can actually even be instantaneous. So as rocks collide or are sheared at those plate boundaries, it can actually instantly change that rock and thus it's a metamorphic rock. It can also happen slowly as they are pressed together and exposed to different degrees of heat over time. That process to change it from one rock type to another can happen slowly. 
Now let's talk about appearance. They can appear in several different ways. Some will have layers or bands that are visible in the rock and others will not. It's just not consistent between every type of metamorphic rock. Some examples are schist, gneiss, quartzite, marble. Now there's many more, but there are a few examples. Here are a couple of pictures. This one right here is nice, and that is formed very deep within the Earth's, um, beneath the Earth's surface. And then over here, you have quartzite. Now, in the nice, you can see the bands. In the quartzite, you cannot. So again, the appearance can vary. Now, let's do a couple of practice questions. This first one. Which of these processes describes how a metamorphic rock is formed? So we're looking at that word metamorphic. Hopefully you think of the caterpillar that undergoes some type of change. There's your key words there. So let's look at our answer choices. A, a rock formed when sediments or broken pieces are cemented together. Now, if you've watched part two of the series, you should very easily know that this is our sedimentary rock cycle. B, a rock that has undergone changes such as intense heat or pressure or chemical reactions. So hopefully you see that word change and you're thinking, ah, I think that's metamorphic. But let's keep looking. C, a rock has been buried deep within the earth by the movement of tectonic plates. Now that one you might be thinking, huh, it's deep, so could that be metamorphosis or metamorphic rocks? So let's just leave that one there for a second. D, a rock formed by cooling of magma or lava. And when you watch part four of the series, you're going to quickly know that one is igneous. So you should have A and D ruled out. If you remember that term I talked about, subduction, that's actually what this is describing right here. The movement or the burying of those rocks through the movement of those tectonic plates. So subduction happens before a metamorphic rock is formed or even after a metamorphic rock is formed, but it's not what actually causes a metamorphic rock to form. So the correct answer here is B, a rock that has undergone changes such as intense heat, pressure, or chemical reactions. Now, this question, which of the following rocks is metamorphic? Now, if you haven't watched part two yet, you're probably like, oh, if you've watched part two, you were prepared for this. Please know that this type of question is really only likely to appear on a middle school or high school exam. So those of you taking an elementary certification exam, probably not going to see this type of question. Now, if you're taking a middle school, it's possible you could see this type. Now, the tricky part about this question is you either just have to know or you don't. So go with your gut and move on. Now I'll walk you through this one. Coal is a sedimentary rock. Granite is an igneous rock. Limestone is a sedimentary rock. And if you were paying attention just a minute ago, nice is actually your metamorphic rock. So the answer is D. Don't stress out about this question. Go with your gut, take your best guess, and move on. Now, I want you to be on the lookout for our last video in the series, part four, where we're gonna talk about the igneous rock cycle. So watch out for that later this week. And remember, there's more information in our study guide. So if you want to learn more, I highly encourage you to get one of our study guides for your exam where you can take practice tests and you can see quiz questions and even read more about rock cycles. Of course, you can always follow us on all of our social media. If you have any questions, just drop them right here in the comments. We watch those and we will answer them. You can also email us at workshops at 240tutoring.com. I hope this has been helpful for you, and I wish you all the best of luck. Again, I'm Dr. Christy Mulkey with 240 Tutoring.